Hi, everybody. This is Bill Holton with Field Trial Central coming to get you, uh, coming to you with Field Trial Central Live. Uh, tonight, we are uh, once again streaming here live on Facebook. We also are live on YouTube. So feel free to share this with everybody you know, and uh, it will be saved and recorded for, uh, for all times at, at both those locations. Uh, uh, one thing that is available, there is a chat down below. Mm -hmm. Feel free to ask any questions or make any comments, and we'll, uh, we'll try to get those addressed as the show goes along. Uh, with all of the housekeeping done, uh, it is my pleasure and honor to, to introduce Gary Lester. We are uh, joined tonight with... Uh, by Gary. Gary obviously is a uh, 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 very accomplished all-age handler, five times uh, winner of the national championship, uh, including this year with Miller's Speed Dial. Gary, thanks for coming on tonight. Well, it's good to be here. Thank you. You bet. Um, tell me a little bit, uh, you know, we'll just get a little bit of an origin story. I, I, I'm sure a lot of people probably know that you've been around the game a long time, but give us a give us a little history on you know, where Gary came from, where, you know, kind of what got you into bird dogs and, and, uh, into field trialing and where we are today. Well, it's pretty interesting. Uh, my mother's oldest brother was a bachelor most of his life and he always had good bird dogs. In fact, he taught, uh, Harold Knight with Knight and Hale game calls, how to hunt and fish. And, uh, you know, I didn't know it at the time, but my uncle started giving me bird dogs when I was 12, 14 years old, and I didn't have a clue how good they were. But looking back, he gave me some really nice dogs. And we we farmed. I farmed all my life. My daddy and both my granddaddy's farm. So, uh, you know, I always knew where there's several birds, you know, they're on the farms and all. And... Uh, you know, I'd take my uncle's dogs and uh, or ones he'd give me, and we'd go hunting, you know, and have a big time. We didn't kill a lot, but we, you know, when his kids had a big time. And uh, got a little older, uh, I had a, uh, an acquaintance, became a real good friend, but at that time just acquaintance, Mr. James Lad. And uh, Mr. James lived down the road from me, and he was a field trialer. And I told, I called him one night. I said, uh, Mr. Ladd, I want you to teach me how to field trial. He laughed. He said, what makes you think you want a field trial? I said, well, I like dogs and horses both pretty good. And I'd raised tobacco in my younger days. And a fella raising tobacco has not enough time for a bird dog. But I'd quit raising tobacco and and uh, I'd bird hunted there for about two or three winters and killed every bird I knew where there was. So I thought, well, I want to try something different. So Mr. Ladd got me started. He ran shooting dogs, just weekend trials and occasional uh, regional championship. And uh, what I didn't know at the time, but I do know now, is uh, Mr. Ladd and Mr. Farrell Miller were really good friends. And so once I got a little more into it, uh, I'd call Mr. Farrell and I said, Mr. Farrell, I said, uh, the first field trial dog I had, his name was Spud. I said, Mr. Farrell, I said, Spud, Spud's doing this or he won't do that. And he'd kind of give me some pointers, you know. And, and he was out of Silver Bullet when Silver Bullet was a pretty young dog. So he'd give me some pointers, you know. And finally one day he said, you just need to load your horse and dog up and come down here and work dogs with me. We'll see what old Spud's are doing. So that's the way I got started. Uh, that's a pretty good start. Oh, well, you know, uh, you know, those people that know me know Mr. Farrell is, is my mentor. And he, Mr. Farrell's a great, great teacher. Uh, Mr. Farrell, uh, you know, he was a drill sergeant. And then he was an ag teacher in high school here in the county, joined me. And actually, he was Mr. James Ladd's teacher. And that's where they got to know one another. But Mr. Farrell loves to teach. And uh, anybody that'll listen, do what he says, he'll teach them all they can. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard great, great things about people that have spent time with Farrell. I, uh, I'm going to bring up one right now and I think he's probably watching tonight. I don't know if you remember a young, a young teenage boy from North Dakota that, uh, spent some time in Canada with Farrell and, and you, uh, Kip Kovar. If you yeah. remember Kip, 
Yeah, oh, Kip's a good yep. friend of mine. I talked Kip to him today. Right young man. Right yeah, young. he's uh, you know, he yeah. lives right near here, uh, Does right he? by me. Yes. So that's good. I uh, tell you a funny story on Kip. When we were in Canada, Mr. Farrell, uh, uh, well, no, uh, let me think. I don't think Kip went to Canada. He went to North Dakota with Farrell. But anyway, Mr. Farrell and his wife, Miss Eleanor. They would pack that trailer of everything they want to eat the whole time we are up there. Miss Elder cooked it all. And uh, the only time they went to uh, went to the uh, uh, went to town was a rodeo where they needed fuel. And so anyway, Kip had went to the rodeo with some other boys, and he got wound pretty tight, you know. And, <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, Mr. Farrell went to get Kip up in the morning. He is, you know, he, he is a little laying a little low, you know. Mr. Farrell said, I said, Kip, you better get up. He said, let her buck. <laughs> <laughs> I said, let her buck hell. I said, you better get up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kip's yeah. a great young man. He's a good, good dog man. Absolutely. Yep. No, Kip's a, Kip's a good, a good guy. And we were actually talking today that, that we need to pack up and head down to to uh to Farrell's and and spend a little time and get get some interview with Farrell and uh Kip was all for that so uh, oh, Kip's boy. got a handful of children now and and busy but he but he's uh and just a wonderful young man yeah 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 no we uh we spent a lot of years re- coaching wrestling together and now he's got some young guys wrestling himself so yeah. but uh yeah so there is a lot of a, a lot of history there with with Farrell and and uh and and I guess that we would have to believe that uh oh Kip says, uh, here, I'll just give you a little, uh, Kip, he comes on and says, oh my, it that happened in Canada. Canada. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so the dogs that you've been running right from probably from quite early, right. That time on have, have all been, uh, what we would call white dogs, right. They've been the, uh, come from the, from Farrell's line to start with. And, and obviously, uh, you know, your own here now. So, uh, that's Trek, correct? Absolutely. You know, not only did Mr. Farrell teach me how to run a dog, you know, he tried to teach me how to breed dogs and, 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 uh, you know, what you needed to be a successful field trialer. And I will say this, I have probably outcrossed a little more than Mr. Farrell did. And we've talked about this and, uh, you know, I knew very well, what the Miller dogs had and very well what I need a little more of. And, uh, you know, we've outcrossed a little bit, but, but it still goes back, you know, uh, of course, you know, back in the day, dogs weren't always registered. And I'm not talking about Mr. Farrell's, but I'm talking about some other dogs weren't always registered just exactly like they were bred. But I've been able to, you know, through some contacts and all to know exactly what was going on here and there. And uh, even though it looks like sometimes I've bred outside pretty far, it wasn't, it wasn't out as far as what the papers show. Sure. Yep. Yep. I can believe that. I can believe that. So uh, first big winner you had. As we work our way forward to this year's national champion, who was the first big winner you had? Well, you know, we won a good bit here and there and sold some dogs that did very well. Uh, you know, we won the national championship five times, but we've sold two dogs that won the national championship and uh, and sold some dogs that not only won the national, but uh, and or uh, were printed dog of the year. Uh, but the first really great dog I had was Lester Snow Watch. Right. Yep. So Snow Watch won the, won the national in, uh, what oh, year? Nine. Oh, nine. Okay. Yeah. That's actually, you know, when I, when I watch, uh, uh, Brad Harder's videos, you know, that he really had a great, you know, presentation of what Snow Watch did there. I mean, there was, it was a a really good it's been one probably i've watched the most of of all uh of all the videos i've watched them all but um that was uh you know you could really see 
the talent that the dog had and in, in, in the type of performance he had that day. Well, you know, I guess other than uh, Snow Watch qualified to run the national as a derby and a, a true age derby really doesn't have much chance to win the national, but it's kind of a feather in the hat of the breeder and the, and the handler to, you know, to have a, a, a derby in the national. I, I've had two of them. I had Lester's uh, uh, Thunderbird and then Lester's uh, Snow Watch. But other than his derby year, I think Snow Watch run a three hours every time I ran him. Oh, wow. He's a strong, strong, strong dog. Had a great, great amount of desire. Had just perfect confirmation. He got that from his sire, Miller's Dateline. Uh, a little too smart. In the, you know, in the later years, I got to where I couldn't get him around because he had run all trial grounds and uh, he could remember where he found birds. And uh, when I turned him loose, he'd just go to the first place he could think there was a covey of birds, and it wasn't always on the course we were on. Yep. But, you know, not only was Snow Watch a great performer, he was a great sire. You know, last time I checked, he had sired 25 champions. Oh, wow. Yeah. Obviously, and in, in Snow Watch was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2017, if I remember right. He was. Uh, so that, that comes both on his – Great. Pardon guy. Yeah, he's great dog. Just a yep. great dog. You know, enjoyed him a lot. Uh, he taught me uh, uh, as much or more than I taught him. Yeah, I could believe that. Yeah. Uh, you know, one thing that's been, you know, a, a pretty common uh, theme when we've talked to talked to handlers here over the last, you know, few weeks and, and talking about the dogs that really stood out, the, you know, the great ones. And, and that, that intelligence was one that, you know, really helps – those dogs figure out, you know, what they're doing out there and help you and help you help them. Well, you know, one of the first things I look for in a young dog, you know, if we go out today and find a covey of birds over here, I take him back over to the same place a week from now. I want him when he hits that spot to look and look hard. I want, I want him to show me that he remembered there was a covey of birds there. And those kind of dogs will just find more birds. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I believe it. I believe it. So, uh, the next dog you won the national with was, Oh, uh, Miller's dialing in. That's what I thought. So, uh, Miller's yeah. dialing in, uh, was one that you, you won with. And then that was, yeah. Speed dials daddy, right? That's right. Yep. Uh, we called him spec. Oh, dang. I've lost. You. Yeah. You, your iPad might've just went to sleep. Just uh, maybe touch the screen. I did. Uh, how did I get back to you? Uh, let's see here. We'll get you back. Uh, maybe is there a? Do I need to go to Facebook or? Nope. Nope. Just, just uh, there should be just a uh, maybe a an app on the bottom. Oh boy, in your. Let's see. Click that. Uh, safari button maybe safari yeah kind of a round blue one could be yeah there you go there we go we got it perfect that's good. yep good i told i was a little bit behind us that's okay we're doing great yeah that's that that's not the biggest problem that could happen uh so uh dialing in tell me a little bit about dialing in or yeah dialing in Dylan Ann was a great dog, or he is a great dog. You know, he's still out there. Uh, I enjoyed dialing in. Uh, I'll tell you a, a little funny story about dialing in. Uh, Ike was ru running him, and, and uh, Ike Todd, I, Ike was working for Joe Don and I, and of course Ike's a wonderful, I mean, just a great, great dog trainer. But he was, uh, he got a little nervous with him and a lot of dog. Uh, he told me, he said, I want you to start work run dialing in. I said, you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. And dialing in was smart, too smart. And so uh, I said, if you sure you want me to run him, I will. He said, okay. And uh, 
I won three championships in 10 days with him. And Ike's lip was pooched out a little bit. And I said, hey, bud. I said, this, I said, the difference of me and you is you broke him. You put that fear in him. And I said, all I've done is just blow the whistle over. And, and I was the only difference, you know. And sometimes uh, it doesn't work for somebody that hadn't been working a dog a lot to handle them, but sometimes it does. And with him, he had kind of held a little grudge against Ike, and, you know. And, uh, you know, later years he got a little grudge against me, but we worked it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if I remember right, dialing in was out of Happy Jack? Absolutely. Yeah. So tell me a little, tell me a little happy Jack, you know, what, you know, obviously we've seen that happy Jack has been a pretty good producer. was a, was a, was a good dog, a uh, great dog himself. And, and uh, give me a little history there. Well, happy Jack was too smart. He was a wonderful dog, strong, one of the strongest dogs I've ever turned loose, probably him and speed dial. Uh, just strong but he was smart and he uh he wouldn't always work for you sometimes he'd work for himself yep and uh last time i ran him at the national he had seven fines and mr pro said bud that's pretty good i said well he i saw him push up four while i was looking <laughs> at him you know and uh he was just smart and he's always uh looking to get by with what he could get by with just like a just like a teenager yeah and uh but strong and we stole him but uh probably should have kept him you know being he turned out to be such a great sire yeah right yeah, yeah. well yeah yeah. I, yeah obviously randy describes him as being self-employed and he 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 was uh a witness to a lot of that, but yeah, he, uh, he was, a, has been a great sire and, and, and obviously was, uh, was a great, you know, uh, competitor for a long time. Oh, so, yeah. 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 Uh, he just, uh, you know, I, I worked a snow watch and, uh, happy Jack together a lot, a lot. Normally, if I'm working dogs, I'll work two or three, normally two. But I work them together just day after day, especially when getting ready for the national, you know. And Happy Jack had way more and better physical qualities than, than Snow Watch did. But Snow Watch had more desire. Okay. And you put them on neutral ground, Snow Watch had out birdie made out of 10 times but uh it was just because he had that desire if snow watch ever smelled a bird he didn't leave her he pointed ah uh, yeah and uh but you know both of them great dogs great dogs i enjoyed both of them a lot absolutely so obviously the next one uh that you won with was uh lester's sunny hill joe that oh. was uh one twice uh, tell me about Joe. Well, Joe's a little different. You know, Joe was out of ransom. Okay. And I yeah. watched, I watched ransom all his life. Uh, I worked dogs at, at Sunny Hill plantation a good bit. And that's where ransom, uh, was born where he's raised. And, and, uh, you know, ransom had that super, super, super nose, but he didn't get a chance to learn where that front end was before he started pointing birds. I told Mr. Bob Walthall once, I said, uh, Ransom need to be at my house for about a month where it wasn't any birds. <laughs> and, uh, but I knew he had that good nose, you know, and, and, and actually Chris, uh, Chris George raised, uh, son of Hill Joe. And, and, uh, I actually bought a couple of pups from Chris 
And one of them is I call Lester Silver Design and then Sonny Hill Joe. Bought them both and then had a buddy bought old Sonny Hill Joe and, and then he sold him back to me. And uh, actually the Silver Design dog I thought was going to be better when they were young. Uh, but he kind of washed out and Sonny Hill Joe just kept getting better, kept getting better. He, he was a, what I'd call a late bloomer. Okay. Just didn't hardly run enough when he's young. Uh, a uh, great big old kind of a gawky dog when he's young, you know, just like a, a, a 14 year old kid that's at six, four, you know, yeah. just, uh, you know, but, but he grew into himself. And uh, Sun Hill Joe was just uh, very biddable. I mean, oh. very biddable, just easy. Uh, hardly ever knock a bird. You know, just once got him broke, just easy. Uh, you know, if you lost him, you get track and go back, he's pointed. You know, uh, I had that super, super, super nose. But, but not any better than, than dialing in, you know. Uh, but I could, he'd let me help him so much, you know, uh, especially at the national, you know, a dog that let you help him is just more competitive there. You know, I've been there a lot. I know where the birds normally are and, you know, a dog that let you put him over where the birds are a win more than one just goes where he wants to go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. obviously, uh, you, you seem to have it. Mark McLean mentioned it the other night when we had him on that Gary seems to have it figured out how to win at those grounds. And, and that's, it's a, it's a tough place to be, uh, for, a, for a lot of guys, but, but man, you really, really have done a, done a great job there, especially over the last, you know, handful of years. But, um, well, what do you I've suppose the secret is plantation for years? I mean, the first field trial I, dog I ever had, I ran names amateur. Okay. And uh, of course now, pretty much the only trial I run there is a national. But I have, you know, I mean, I've run names amateur, the Hobart Ames. Uh, uh, I know I ran the uh, amateur quail championship there one time. Uh, and the national, uh, sometimes they'd have a regional championship there. And so I know the grounds really, really, really well. Yeah. And of course I ran there when they just had wild birds. But what I have found is uh, whether it's wild birds or pre-release birds, they like the same kind of place. And you know, where I found the wild birds years ago, that's where I find pre-release birds today. And where I found them pre-release birds five years ago, I'll still find them there today. And if you've got a dog that'll let you help him, and I'm not talking about taking a dog to the birds, but if the birds are on the right side, your dog don't need to be on the left side. Right. Yep. yep. And I, I've, I have done well there, but I've studied that place a lot. And, and, uh, you know, some of them complain about it. Uh, my great, great late friend, Robin Gates and I were there together one day and we were talking and uh, Jamie and I think Mark was there and they was fussing a little bit about the national, you know, I got to go up there now, that's and that. And I told Robin, I said, Robin, I said, once they get up on that porch, they like it a lot better. He said, you damn right. They like it a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and they're great buddies of mine, you know, great buddies. But uh, you say what you want, but the national championship is the national championship. It's been going on for 121 years. I mean, I just feel just, you know, it's just, uh, it's just touching when you think about it, you know, I mean, you know, you, you think about the uh, Super Bowl. You know, it hadn't been going on half as long as the National Bird Dog Championship. Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that, and as that's one of those things that, that we love to talk about in this, you know, on these broadcasts and, and what we, when we get together, you know, at the, on the tailgate there, you know, around horse trailers, the history that's been going on in this game and, and all of the, 
you know, all the great things in, in, uh, in the past that we've, we've been able to see and, and read about. So, um, tell me a little bit about this year's national championship. Well, uh, Miller speed dial, you know, his derby year, I thought he was one of the nicest dogs I'd ever turned loose. I mean, just got all the tools, got that super nose, uh, runs the front, just strong, extremely strong, uh, pretty pointed. I mean, points that tail straight up, just pretty and, and endurance, just a great amount of endurance. And we did pretty good with him his derby year. And then the next year, whoo, we didn't win too much, you know, and it was just, it was just like a, I don't know. It's just like a swinging pendulum. You know, he'd run too much. I'd work him, fuss him out of him a little bit. He wouldn't work enough. He wouldn't run enough, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And it just, uh, it was really frustrating to me. I mean, I felt like the dog was capable of so much more than, than what I was getting out of him. And it just took me a while to figure him out. He is so strong. I mean, I work him all I can. And if it's a one hour stake, I mean, I try and work him a day before, uh, if at all possible, if not rode him. And then I, I shoot, I rode him 30, 45 minutes an hour before I turned him loose at our stake. Mm. And he's just so strong that uh, if you don't, he's just running and flying and not hunting as much, you know. And of course, you know, everybody knows he didn't, he didn't point any birds the first hour at the national this year. Yep. But, but I knew the judges were liking him. Uh, we crossed the second road and, uh, it was a big field there and I sent him around it and, and it's, it's, it goes way back in a little hole and then the edge comes on out. But I sent him around there and I just sat there on my horse and, point him out and I could hear him holler and I thought, boy, I got excited. Them judges national don't holler much. He went on up in that hole and I thought, I'll never call him out of there, but I squalled at him here. He'd come on back toward me, back around that edge. And uh, boy, I pointed him out again. They hollered again. I thought, whoo, you know, they like him. And they should like him. I mean, he was looking good. He's handling good, gorgeous running. And so, uh, of course, I've run down there enough. I don't even have to look at my watch. I know about where you are an hour, you know, a yep. road crossing there. And, and I'd call point a time or two right before that road crossing. He's out there in the woods and he'd mess around up there and kind of, I thought maybe he's pointing a woodcock or something, you know, and then he'd go on. And uh, I mean, I'd, I, you know, I'd call point and I'd wave it off. I mean, he wouldn't, you know, it'd just be a second or two. And, and uh, when I got that road, uh, you know, a lot of people would have picked up his eye, hadn't had any birds. But I knew those guys were like me because they had hollered when I pointed him out in there good, you know. And so I went on, and then, of course, it wasn't just a few minutes. He had a good find, you know, and then went on from there. But he's just so strong. Uh, I don't know if uh, Brad got it or not on video. But uh, when we picked him up, it was uh, uh, there at a road crossing in the three hours. And, uh, you know, the thing to do at the National, you know, when your dogs run three hours is, you know, put him up and he scouts saddle and gone in. I'm not much on that. You know, that dog, I mean, if, if, we, if they'd want him to run another hour, it'd been fine. We put him in the wrong road and harness, and I've got a picture of him. I mean, just laying down that road and harness, pulling. You know? Yep. A lot of guys ask me, they say, how you get a dog ready to run three hours? I said, you breed him to run three hours. Right. And then you work on his mind, or he'll stay with you. 
at a slower pace and uh, and point the number of birds that they want there. But but these dogs, I mean, these dogs that I've run, they're bred to run three. I mean, three to three hours, they don't need no saddle. I'll tell you that. How, uh, how old is Speed Dial? Speed Dial, I think he's four. Oh, wow. Right. So, yeah, so he's he's got a lot of years. you got a lot of years left with him, hopefully. Well, I hope so. Yep. You know, uh, boy's a strong dog, just so strong. Uh, you want me to tell you a little bit about the strategy? On I do. Here at the National? Absolutely. Well, my strategy was uh, to work him every day, or if I couldn't work him, rode him. I'm very fortunate. Got a lot of places to work. You know, a lot of people let me work. And uh, he drew out the second week. So, you know, I looked and I saw what Luke got done and, and I saw what Jamie got done. I wasn't there, but uh, I called a fella that, that's not an official any kind of way, but he rides every brace. And I just asked him. I said, what's it going to take to win this trial? He said, well, you know, you won it four times. I said, no, what's it going to take to win this one? He said, well, it's a dog needs to be jumping at the end and, and look awful good on his birds. So I, I really studied on that and I thought, well, Jamie and uh, Luke had done exactly what I was planning on doing. Exactly. And I thought, well, if I'm going to win this thing, I'm going to have to do something different. So I rested that son of a gun four out of six days. And uh, I believe he ran on a Tuesday. Now, on Saturday, I took him and worked him and and worked him pretty hard. And I tried getting his head pretty good, you know. Uh, poured a lot of birds. Uh and it was uh, a friend of mine there, just real close to Grand Junction down Holly Springs, that let me work and uh, worked him pretty hard. And then when we we turned him loose there Tuesday morning, I'm just scared to death that morning course. Uh, you turn loose and just basically go straight in there about a half a mile, and then you take a 90 degree to the left. Well, all that's good except for there's roads and paths and, and horse tracks, just keep going straight. And what it is, it's afternoon course uh, where it comes in. And, and I've heard people say, well, they hardly ever run the three, hour, but, but what they don't understand is the rental horses come in on that course every day. So those horse tracks are there, that's sense there. And a, and a smart field trial dog, you know, he's listening to you, but he's also knows about those horse tracks and that scent. And, you know, as long as he's got that scent, he thinks he's on the course, you know. And uh, like I said, the morning course just scares me to death there at the National because of that. And we turned that son of a gun loose, and sure enough, you know, he went out on that morning course and, Oh, I knew where, um, you know, my, I got a wonderful, wonderful great scout, Mark Haynes, and I knew, I knew where Mark was going. I knew exactly where he's going to try and catch him. But I knew there was 20 places between that road crossing and where Mark was going that he could be pointed. So I, I left the gallery and went in there, you know, when I got that road, you know, the road gallery let me know he hadn't crossed. And so I went flying in there and was looking at those places he ought to be pointing. But Mark got him, got him back to the front. But once we got him to the front, he, he did everything I asked him to do. I never asked that dog to do one thing he didn't do. You know, he showed good. He handled good. Uh, you know, when I'd send him, he'd go. When I called him, he'd come. And... Uh, I was really, really proud of him. Really proud of him. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Well, I, I'd had to have been a, 
a little bit of a nervous moment, right? Right, knowing that you wanted to work him every day going into the national, and then deciding you had to rest him, and knowing you're going to have uh, someone who's pretty wound up and ready to go when you turn him loose into into a tough spot, especially on that course. You know, it yeah. wouldn't have bothered me if he'd been the afternoon course, but it really, uh, you know, but but. I really like to win the national championship. I really do. And I spend a lot of time and a lot of thought and a lot of effort on how I'm going to get it done. It don't, it don't always work out, but if you don't have a plan, it's probably not going to work out. Yep. Yep. No, I can see that. So, uh, I think I kind of know a little bit, but give us a little story of where, where speed dial came from. How did he get his start? Well, uh, you know, we call our deal the company White Dogs. You know, it's a lot of us. You know, I'm out there in the limelight, you know, handling the dogs, but there's a lot of people involved, a lot of people. And what we try and do is make sure that uh, everybody gets a little money out of the deal. Everybody gets a little recognition. Uh, and we all have a good time and we're all, uh, Christians. We fear God, we respect God and we thank him every day for what he's done for us. And, uh, he's blessed us just, just tremendously. And so, uh, I'm going to tell you about speed dial, but this goes with all our dogs. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, speed dial. Derek Bonner did not whip speed dial, but he whips most of them, okay? And Derek and his wife are walking horse trainers, uh, just the two of them. Most of the time don't have any help, don't train a lot of horses. And uh, right there, by the, anybody knows anything about walking horses, know at the barn to have some cross ties there before they saddle the horses and prepare them to work and all. And, Right there by the cross ties, they've got two stalls that they have converted to whipping pins. And uh, not only Derek, but his wife, Deb, are, are, they love dogs, they love puppies, and they're really good with them. So I'll breed them, and then uh, they'll whip the puppies, and they'll keep them till they're some worse, you know, 12, 16 weeks old, just according to how it works out. And then they go to Mr. Farrell Miller's. And Mr. Farrell runs them on what we call Proteamus. I've got it leased and, and have had for years. Uh, Joe Don House and I leased it back when Ike Todd worked for us, but I've leased it ever since. And we all go to Mr. Farrell's. And him and Mr. Uh, uh, Scott Mason take them and just run them on horseback. You know, they time out, they get used to a chain, they get, you know, they take them and run them. They work them on, on, on a uh, bench a little, not a whole lot, but mostly just they get acclimated that horse. They learn how to run the front. And then every year along about uh, middle of February, 1st of March, Chris Peake picks up all my dogs. And uh, Chris takes them to South Georgia and runs on plantations, South Georgia, North Florida. And he'll run them about six weeks. And he, he goes through them and decides, you know, what, you know, hey, I think this one will make it for you, this one won't. You know, we'll break this one and, and, uh, and sell him for a, dog, a plantation dog, you know. And so, um, and then, uh, Chris will bring them up to Mr. Farrell's and I'll look at them two or three times up there. In fact, about this time of year, next week, I'll look at them. But I go more on what Chris says because he's looked at them day after day after day. And I just looked at them two or three times. And uh, so he'll pick out, you know, two, four, six, whatever that we think might make derbies, you know. And then... Uh, the way Chris gets compensated is he takes the rest of them and breaks them for uh, plantation dogs and sells them. And then uh, uh, Chris will take them to South Dakota 
in July, 1st of August. He'd be up there about six weeks, you know, and then they'd come back. And, oh, they work at Mr. Farrell's, and normally I send whoever's working for me, hopefully uh, Mark Haynes, they go work with Mr. Farrell, Mr. Scott Mason, and they'll work them until I get on with my crops. And then from that time on, I work them. Uh, you know, I work them, uh, take them to trials, work them. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't campaign that many. You know, sometimes four or five all-age dogs, three or four or five derbies. We get down to two derbies. And, uh, you know, we go to big trials like Continental and the Florida Championship. You know, I may not ride. Yeah, you know, the Continental will last it and the Derby Championship, they'll last, you know, 12, 14 days. Yeah. I might not ride, but four or five days, and I'm working dogs the rest of the time. Okay. You know, and uh, and then after the Continental, we just strictly we'll work them all. But the main focus is trying to get those dogs ready for the national championship. And the guys in South George and North Florida got a lot of friends down there, and, and uh, we take care of them. You know, I mean, we furnish some dogs, horses, do whatever, whatever it takes. You know, uh, if you let me run a dog on your place. Work out or a trial, you can breed anything I got the rest of your life for mm-hmm. free. And so we've got good relationships there. And we just work them and work them and work them and work those dogs on a lot of birds. And, and, and when we're getting ready for the national and you've got a big running, strong dog, the best way to get him uh, ready for that national championship is just put him on a lot of birds every day. And I'm talking about. 10, 12, 16, 18 cubbies a day. And and uh, I normally work two of them. You know, they point and back. But they listen to me. And I don't kill any birds, kill absolutely no birds. But I'll have that, uh, I, I'll have my pockets or, or my saddlebags full of chicken strips or hamburgers or something. That dog does a good job. He gets rewarded. You know, I, you know, I pet him, tell him he did good, feed him, you know, and uh, just reward him, you know. Yeah. Old Sonny Hill, Joe, I go, whoa, Joe. And he try and get on that horse with me. <laughs> I mean, here he come. He loved that fried chicken. Yeah. <laughs> but but it just, uh, you know, these dogs are smarter than most people realize. And I try and reward my dogs for doing a good job. And, and I discipline them, but but it's got to go both ways. When they do it right, you've got to reward them. You know, if, if they've made a big cast and been gone six, eight minutes and show up right to the front, I just call them to me, feed them, pet them, get off, pet them, tell them they did good. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's obviously been a been a – a good feature for him. Hey, we had one question here and I think that you may have just answered, but I'm going to put it up. I don't know if you can read it there or not, but David Moore, he asked breeding aside, what's the next key component to the dogs, derby development, people involved, wild birds or all of them above. Well, all the above, uh, wild birds. There's never been a great dog that didn't point a lot of wild birds. That's my opinion. And you I share it dog and you can break them on, on libs and all, but a dog never really learns how to hunt until he works. And the more I work on wild birds, the happier I am. Right. Yeah. You and the dogs. Yeah. The wild birds and just work and work and work. A, a, a derby, a derby takes a tremendous amount of work, tremendous amount of work. And some people kind of fuss it, you know, some of the pros, some of my buddies, you know, all this, they didn't do this stuff. Hey, they're trying to make a living. They don't have the time to work a derby as much as got to be work. Uh, you know, Mr. Farrell Miller's the one that started the thing that derby's got to be broke and pretty, you know. And and everybody, I've heard it and heard it and heard it. Oh, Joe Don, Jerry, and Farrell, run them old dogs, run them old dogs. We don't have enough patience to run old dogs. I'm not going to keep a dog around. The deal is, it's not how old he is. 
it's number of hours on the ground. Yeah. And, you know, you, you take the dogs that's won the national championship for us, it's just, you wouldn't believe the hours they've been in front of a horse. You know, now, I, and I'm not talking about roading them. You know, somebody asked me, said, how much you got to road a dog, get it ready for the national? I said, well, no. You know, uh, the only time we ever rode a dog, well, I rode a dog for two reasons. One is if I'm at a trial and a dog needs exercise and then I just don't have a place to turn him loose. And two, if I'm just wanting to tease a derby and get him, him run a little more, you know, I might rode him 20 minutes and put him up, 20 minutes, put, you know. But, but roading a dog is not the way I prepare a dog. It's working, working. Yeah. You know, I've always felt that, you know, and I feel the same way you do. I think that, you know, those derbies just need a lot of time and they need a lot of birds. A and, lot of uh, and, and when you're working, uh, on wild birds, they need a lot of time because it's, they don't come across them as like the old dogs do, you know, they have to learn to find them. So, so it just takes more time. Absolutely. hundred percent. You know what? I've heard some people say, oh, your dog gets stale. You know, let him have two good finds and put him up. You know, I'm a pretty big basketball fan being here from Kentucky. Can you imagine Coach Calipari taking his guys out, and if they hit a couple of three-pointers, I'm talking about in practice, tell them just say, okay, you just run laps next hour. Yeah. You do it, you do it again and again and again and again. And there's times you need to get them out of birds, you know, but it's just – you know, and, and it also gives the handler confidence. You know, oh. I mean, if I've seen my dog handle these birds or relocate these dog, these birds like this time and time and time again, you know, when I step off that horse, I know what I want to do. You know, I look at that dog, I tell how far them birds are. And uh, now I don't flush my bird for my dogs very much on horseback. When I'm working, you know, I'll just, I'll just hop off, tap that dude on the head and say, go hit them, show me where they are. Uh, and then that gives me the confidence to do that in the trial, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So obviously you love the national, you love those running dog there. What other grounds are stand out to you as dog, places you love to run dogs? You know, what I found out is the more I go to a place, the better I like it. Uh, two of my favorite places don't run dogs anymore. One of them is uh, Shell Creek in Camden, Alabama, Mr. Bud Moore's place. I think the last year they had trials there, I won every stake ahead there. I mean, they had the Black Belt, the Black Belt Derby. And, uh, they had, uh, I think, they had a, a the regional amateur thing. Uh, I had the national derby championship, free for all championship. It's a good place for my dogs. Another place I just love, they don't have any more, is Outland Ranch, Mr. Jim Fournier's place. My dogs did, I, I, they, my dogs just did good there. I had a lot of confidence when I turned dogs loose to those places. But I, you know, uh, I go south. Uh, I leave day after Christmas, stay in South Georgia and Florida uh, pretty much, uh, you know, from Christmas till I go to the National. Uh, it's really been a, a, a struggle for me to win in the Piney Woods. Uh, but I like working dogs down there. And it's, you know, I have so many opportunities to work my dogs on wild birds down there. And I just love it. You know, I've not won that Continental Championship yet. I've got runner-up a couple times. I won the Continental Derby a time or two. Got runner-up two or three times. But I enjoy it down there. I like it. Uh, 
I'm more competitive up here in this age country, there's no doubt about it. But I farm for a living. I run dogs for fun. I have more fun that sand sun I can up here in this ice and mud. <laughs> yep. Uh, but, you know, I mean, Hell Creek, I won a lot of trials at Hell Creek, uh, big edge country. Uh, the pyramid grounds up in, in Illinois are, are working out nice. I love to run dogs over uh, at Grove Springs, Missouri. I've not run dogs over a lot because that, those trials are so late. I'm normally uh, getting in the field and planting corn, but as I've kind of semi-retired, you know, my son can take care of that. And, but I love I love Grove Springs grounds. Uh, used to really like Paducah when they had the wild birds. It's not as good now, but you know, when the wild birds, uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, great grounds. Never had a lot of birds. Some always run on wild birds. And, We've about lost that. Just don't have the contacts with the military like we used to when Mr. Sam Johnson and uh, Ben Adams were there. But, I, you know, uh, Mr. Ted Baker, you know, yeah, that's different than any place I've ever turned a dog loose. I remember the first time I went out there, I turned Snow Watch loose. He hit that fire break and run, run around that whole place twice. <laughs> <laughs> He thought he'd found him a good edge, but that's not the way you win at Mr. Ted's, you know. I've not won it. I got run up there a couple of times, but uh, we're going to win it before we quit, hopefully. That's the Florida, the Florida open all-edge. Yep, yep. Yeah. Just in case someone didn't catch that, but yeah, that's... Great place, great in, place. Good people. Yeah, and, and, and quite a difference in grounds between there and, and Dixie, right? Yeah. You know, Mr. Ted, now they got one course that gets over in the Piney Woods, but they got a couple of courses that's almost like being on the prairie, you know. Yeah. It's just I haven't been there, but that's what I've heard. Tall grass and uh, it's wild birds, a lot of them, and they act like wild birds. You know, they might run off. They might, uh, they might flush before you get there. You know, they're wild birds. They don't play fair, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's a challenge, but I, I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy it. You know, I, I'm a lover of the land. Uh, I farm for a living, you know, have all my life. I love to go to all the different places and see how people manage their land different. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, different parts of the country have to be managed different, you know, but... Uh, I'll just say this field trial has been, I mean, it's really been a blessing to me. I met lots of great people, you know, get to get out there in God's beautiful earth. Uh, just, uh, you know, enjoying being out there and, and, uh, you know, some field trialers are just not horse people. They just like a horse as a tool, but I love horses. I mean, I trail ride and I scout my crops on horseback here at home. Oh, you do, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love, uh, you know, I just love everything about it. Really do. Well, I was going to say that, you know, there's so many parts and I've, I've had these discussions sitting, you know, around a tailgate or around a fire before, you know, there's so many fun things and so many things that come into the field trial game, right? And you mentioned it, the country, right? All over the place. It's, it's different everywhere you go. Uh, The birds are another big thing that I think a lot of times get, get kind of left, left out, right? We chase everything from, you know, grouse and woodcock to, you know, chickens and pheasants and, sure. you know, quail. And, and, uh, and to me, I, you know, I love, and that's one of those things that stand out. I love wild birds. And, you know, today while I'm driving around work and I saw chickens in the air and I saw rooster pheasants fighting on the road and, you know, that really just brightens up your day. So that's part of your, part of your game. And then, uh, the horses, uh, are another part of it. Uh, and then one thing we, you know, the, the, the biggest part of it, I guess, are the dogs, you know, and, and the people. So, uh, it's really been a great sport for, you know, all of us that have been involved and, and I can tell, I can tell that you've, uh, you've really enjoyed it. Well, it's been a great sport for me. You know, when I first started going to field trials, one of the first things I noticed, I said, well, there's a lot of old people out here, (laughs) you know, you can do this when you're old. 
and uh, I'm getting to be one of them. You know, I'm 64 now, and uh, but that's one thing I really noticed. You know, is is you know, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, if you're going to be a basketball player or a pro golfer or football, you know, you you know, you get about 35, you're about out. You know, but I just I, I said, well, you know, old people can be as competitive at this as anybody. And you know, other than my eyesight, uh, I can't flush like Luke Eisenhart now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but other than uh, mostly my eyesight, you know, I mean, I'd be competitive with these younger guys, you know. And I enjoy them. I enjoy these young guys so much. I mean, Luke Eisenhart, uh, uh, Jamie Daniels, Mark McClain, Ike Todd, I, you know, they're, they're good friends of mine. Uh, you know, the late Robin Gates. I mean, when I, when I started going South, I rode every brace and watched. And, and I rode every brace at every trial until my health wouldn't let me, but, or, or my back. But, you know, if I could go watch somebody like Robin or, Luke or Jamie, you know, especially down in the woods, I could learn so much, you know, I yeah. see where, you know, I could see where they sent their dogs. If those dogs went in there, where would they come out? You know, and, and uh, when Robin was running the dog, I sit right behind those judges. You'd think I owned the dog because I was looking all the time. You know, and watching is what what's he doing? Robin was was the greatest showman I've ever seen with a dog. And they say his brother uh, John Rex said he's better than Robin, but I, I never saw John Rex. <laughs> but uh, you know, it is a show. Absolutely. And it's uh, the handler and uh, scout and the dog put the show on. And uh, and the best show is if you got two scouts that work together and two handlers that work together and they trust one another's dogs and you can put on a good show. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I want to be braced with the best dog out there and the best handler out there because this is the deal. If he's a good handler, his dog will back. He's not going to trail, you know, he's yeah. going to go do his thing. If he comes up on my dog, he's going to back. My dog comes up on him. He's going to back. And if the handlers trust one another, I mean, it's four sets of eyes out there instead of two. Yeah. And well, it, I can't it, tell you how many times, you know, we've seen a uh, winner and runner up and championships come out of the same brace. And that's, those are really, really, I mean, you'd think that it's a rare thing, but it's a, common thing and they're a special thing to watch they are special they are special you know i told a, a fella this fall i'm not going to call his name <laughs> but i told him i said you know i said i can name all the great jobs i've had a dog do at a field trial on two hands maybe on one hand i can name hundreds and i'm thinking well our expectations are just different you know, I've got very, very high expectations of a dog. Uh, you know, my dog goes through there and your dog goes through and they both do all right. And they name yours instead of mine. I'm fine. But if mine goes through there and knocks it out, I want to check. I want that recognition that dog deserves. And that's the reason I, I like to run under judges that, uh, that run dogs. Cause guys that have run dogs, they, they realize it's just not too often that a great job happens. And if you get a great job done, a dog should be rewarded for it. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. That's, and that's one of the times, you know, when people say, Hey, you know, I, I won, I went to a field trial and my dog did good and he, 
you know, and we didn't, and, and people get upset, but that's the reason it's not because they really wanted the recognition themselves. Most of the time, sometimes that's that fun. might be the case, but most of the time it's because, man, I just like to see a dog that did what he just did for me get recognized. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Like yeah. I say, I mean, I've been to lots of field trials, won lots of field trials, but I know I name on both hands when my dog just flat did to suit me, you know? Yep. It's just not that often, and uh, it's uh, it's hard to it's hard to know whether what to reward if you hadn't been out there, you know. Right. Uh, you know, some judges are just uh, looking for a reason to pick a dog up. They just act like they're just uh, bored. Uh, you know, they just be glad when it's over. You know, I, li I, li I like to run from a judge that's excited. He wants to, you know, he's looking all the time. And, and, and I mean, he's looking for something he can use. He, you know, he wants a dog he can use. And he's excited about it. Yep. yep. And it's, uh, it's hard, especially now we don't have as many bird hunters, you know. Right, right. Yeah, you can sure tell the difference in, in you know, in a judge that's been, a, a, you know, a dog man that's been breaking his own dogs, running his own dogs, and uh, and bird hunting, you know, that's grew right. up that way. Yeah, you if can tell you the difference for sure. just learned about it on the tailgate of a truck, and you're not sure what to do. And, you know, I, I told somebody once, I said, I'd rather run under a crook. A fella don't know, I might get that crook on my side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but, you know, saying that, the great majority of the guys we run under are 100% honest. And, and, you know, they're using what they think is the best. And, and we know when we went there, uh, you know, in the open knowledge trials, we know who the judge is going to be. Yep. And if we don't want to abide by, uh, you know, their opinion, we don't have to go. No, no. That's all we're asking for is their opinion. And we, their opinion. that's what they're getting paid to give. Yep. And sometimes their opinion is different than mine. You yep. know, yep. And it'll happen. Realize that, you know, yep. Yep. You know, I, uh, I, I judged a big championship. One of the, the first really big championship I judged is the Southeastern. I don't know. They had probably 65, 70 dogs. And I hadn't been at it too long, but, uh, and, and, uh, Clarence Clower judge with me and, and Clarence and I, well, we like the same kind of dog. We, you know, we knew it wouldn't be a problem with us. We knew what we wanted, but now I rode and looked and is in the spring. Them birds are wild down South in the spring. They call point and I hooked that horse down in there and looked, you know, and, and, uh, when it's all over, we named two dogs we thought was best and had a fella come to me and he said, a nice fella, he's a good friend today. He said, uh, I thought you was going to use my dog. I said, well, you had a nice dog. I just thought we had better. He said, well, you really rode hard and looked at it. I said, well, and that what you paid me to do? You know, I said, I tried to ride hard and look at every one of them, you know. Because you can't go on what that dog did last week or what he's done, you know. He's praying a dog of the year, this and that. It's just what that dog did that day. And if it gets down to that, if you'll just look at the dogs, forget the people, and just look at what that dog does that day, it's not that complicated. Yeah. Oh, hold on one second. I, we had a little, I got my computer locked up a second there, but yeah, no, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a job that is, not always the most fun job to do, but it's it's sure fun to watch them. You know when they it's always do. fun to watch a good dog. You know, I judged the Southeastern Championship again. It's the last time I judged them. There's a lot of dogs down there, and and, and uh, named the dog champion that I, I'd watch a dog all my life, or all of his all of her life. Never saw her do but two good jobs in her life. Well, that was one of them. You know. And, and after it's over, the fellow said, Ooh, said, I sure appreciate it. I didn't think you liked her. I said, I don't like her. I liked her yesterday. Yep. No, so she did a good job yesterday, you know. Yep. And that's all there is to it. Sometimes, you know, get a little aggravated sometimes with judges that say, Well, 
you know, I'd just like to see what a dog does it on its own in public. In the public here, I can't just say exactly what a dog would do on its own, but we all know what they'll do on their own. Yep. And uh, I just like to get back to it. it's a show. Yep. And, and the handler needs to help. And the scout dang sure needs to help. Now you don't need to see what the scout does, but it don't matter what that scout does if you don't see it. And then what the dog does, and you put it all together, and who put on the best show? You know, who put on the best show? Speaking of show, you mentioned before, Robin obviously was a great showman. He's got you know renowned for that. He's he's uh, I think. Mark McLean mentioned the other night that, you know, he's the, he's the Michael Jordan of, of field trials, you know, give oh, us, yeah. give us a little, uh, you know, obviously, you know, this is a huge loss to the community, but, uh, give us just a, maybe a, a Robin story or two, you know, lives the, to live on by. Well, <laughs> I could tell you a lot of stories about Robin, but Robin would just, he would just go along there. It's just kind of like everyday job until he started getting something done. And he didn't have to be getting that much done sometimes, you know, but he'd jump up in that saddle and, uh, he is the best at when he was giving his dog to his scout after a fine, he'd go to mumbling something where the judges could hear it. <laughs> <laughs> that was to his benefit, you know. And uh, I, I remember, I remember very well. He won a Georgia Derby Championship with a dog. It just flat knocked of his birds and stopped, or some birds and stopped. And and uh, and uh, anyway, uh, old Robin uh, was handing the dog uh, to the. Uh, scouts you know and of course the judge is there he said oh man so you see that? that's wild cubby bird you see how wild they was see how they jumped <laughs> <laughs> but robin would just he he could get the judges and the whole gallery excited about a dog the quickest anybody i've ever seen and he wouldn't overuse it you know if a dog wasn't doing nothing he'd just go along you know he might just pick him up, you know, but if that dog just went to clicking a little, you know, boy, he, he could jump up in that saddle. Of course, he's a great big joker, you know, and, and, uh, you know, it's, it's like, golly, if Robin's liking him, he's got to be doing a great job, you know? Yep. And that, I mean, that's his job. You know, and, and he, Robin had some good scouts too, you know, old Ron, I say, Ron, I can't, uh, Ron Smith scouted for him for years. And, and, uh, that's when I scout for Mr. Farrell a lot, man, Ron was good. We'd go out there, we'd work together, you know, Ron was the best. And then after that Hunter scouted for him and, and, and I've, I, I've judged Robin's dog several times and oh, Robin, he was just, uh, persistent. If he had a dog that wouldn't hardly go good enough. He'd pitch it that scout, and if it didn't take, he'd just pitch it again. If it didn't take, he'd just pitch it again. He'd just keep on till it. The first thing you know, you know, Ron or Hunter, they way off in there calling points, a limb fine, you know. Uh, and he wasn't obvious about it. I mean, you had to know what was going on. And you know, Robin and I talked a lot about dogs and and and. We're good friends. We talked a lot about our families and and dogs and, and what it took to win. And I sold several dogs to Robin or, you know, his customers, you know, and, and uh, he did very well with them, you know. Uh, but but you want to, you want a Robin story, I'm going to tell you a Robin story. I was showing Robin and Mark McLean two dogs. Three dogs. I showed them three dogs. They bought two of them. The ones they bought was uh, Robin bought Georgia, uh, Lester Georgia Time, and uh, Mark bought Lester's Private Charter. 
and I showed him another little dog. This other little dog get down in front end a little bit when he was uh, when he points, you know. Oh, Robin, uh, Ace and the Gary said, how, "How about that?" I said, "I don't know, Robin." Uh, I said, "I felt, I saw a fellow win the Continental Championship one got a hell of a lot lower than that." <laughs> <laughs> it, it was his. He said, "Oh, oh boy, oh boy." He he redeemed himself on the next one. I said, "Well, I tell you one thing." I said, "If old Lester had been judging, he'd been no redemption. He'd been up that first <laughs> time he laid down." <laughs> <laughs> but Robin could get by with some stuff like that, you know. Uh, he was just—I don't. Everybody loved Robin, you know. And I remember back in the day now. If you were at a trial, it didn't matter where it was. If Robin Gates got a good job done, the next day, John Rex was there. You know, John Rex is putting his arm around everybody and, how you doing, buddy? And, you know, it was just, uh, they were so good at it. They make people feel so good about themselves, you know. It wasn't any cheating. It was just, they could just make you... Uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it was just something very that that just people just drew to them, you know. Yeah. They're great, great at what they did. I, I, I mean, they both great friends of mine, and and uh, you know, I'll, I'll as long as I live, I'll never forget Robin Gates and some of the jobs I watched him do and. And, and what he did. And, hey, when I'm out there handling the dog today, I, I'll think about, you know, like, what would Robin done here? You know? Yeah. And, and it's just that they, they're good at what they did. Yeah, that's and really good, saying something. And good people, you know. Gosh, Robin would ask me every year. He said, uh, of course, I judge him a little bit. He said, <laughs> he said, now, bud, he said, do you got that place down in Panama? I said, come on. And said, I'll take you fishing. I'm not too much a fisherman. But my grandson got up big enough to fish a little bit. He's probably nine or ten, you know. And we were down to Continental. I said, Robin, you've always asked me to go fishing. I said, uh, I'd love for you to take me, me and my grandson fishing. He said, well, it's done. You know. And you know, he took us fishing one day. It just worked out. My grandson was down there on spring break with his mama. And I flew down there. I was planting corn. I flew down there for, I mean, I couldn't be there, but one day and left. The weather was terrible. It's too windy. I mean, shouldn't have been fishing. And you know, uh, he and Cecil and uh, uh, Mike Cheeley took us fishing. And all they did was just make sure that young and had a good time. All three of them, you know, they wouldn't have been out. It was rough and cold and, you know, but they showed that young and a good time. That's just the way Robin was. That's the way his friends were. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I want to finish with just one more story. So you've obviously seen a lot of dogs do great jobs of your own. I like to ask people about, you know, one or two other performances that, that other people ran that stood out to you that you remember over those years? I hadn't been field trialing very long. And Farrell Miller ran Miller's uh, Silver Bullet in the Invitational at Paducah. And you just couldn't draw it out any prettier, you know. That dog ran, and that's when they ran on wild birds or pointed. I can remember he had a fine, on the, I don't know, the number two and five course covers some of the same ground. So I'm not sure which course. He's over there, those guys run to do, he's between the graveyard and the main highway over there, and he pointed. He just cocked his head to the left where those birds were. Dog standing straight up, but his head just turned, you know. And, uh, of course, any good bird hunter knows where the birds was. They were right in front of that dog's nose. 
with the dog Ram. Mr. Greg St. John was scouting for Farrell and, and uh, now I didn't know Farrell much at all. And, and I didn't really know what a field trial dog was supposed to do, but I knew I liked what that dog did. And I watched, I don't think I got to watch him Monday, but I, I watched him uh, Saturday and Sunday and just, I mean, just great. And I'll tell you one other one. Uh, I scouted House's Rain Cloud twice when he won the Invitational. And I remember once I scouted him and uh, he had, uh, you know, they run an hour one day, run an hour the next day, and they run two hours the next. And conditions always tough at Paducah. I mean, muddy, cold, nasty. It's Thanksgiving weekend. It's just something about it. It's the weather and be nasty in Paducah that weekend. And uh, I know the first day I, I, we'd lost that dog, and uh, they had six courses there. And the morning evening courses kind of run parallel, kind of the same grounds, but not the exact same path, you know. I went in there and found him on the other course, a good, good find. And, uh, you know, usually I scouted a lot of dogs. In, usually at two-hour deal, I had a place over I'd try and catch them and rest them a little bit, you know, kind of let the handler go up there and make a little loop and, you know, turn them loose again. Well, I went in there and tried to catch a rain cloud and couldn't couldn't catch him. And I thought, well, buddy, you still got a long time to run, you know. You may have wished you'd rested. <laughs> <laughs> but just before pickup, uh, into two hours, he jumped the road out of the wildlife management area, go over on private ground. I was on a good horse. I mean a good one. And he went around the bean field, and, and I mean, we was over there, just me and him. There were no judges there. And I thought, I've got to catch this dog and get a rope on him. You know, it's pickup time. And I just didn't think I was going to catch him. I mean, strong, strong, strong. That dog, he wasn't on all that often. But now when he was on, he was unbeatable. He was so damn strong, you know. Just so strong. Uh, I, I mean, I'd see him right today. Uh, a lot of them fussed at him because Mr. Farrell taught me to scout. I wouldn't be there a lot of times if they had a fine. Mr. Farrell always taught me. He said, look, bud. He said, you be where that dog shouldn't be. If he's where he should be, I got it. Yeah. If I, you know, if he's where he ought to be, he'd ride up there and find him. And, you know, I'd hear the gun maybe, and I'd come riding up, you know, and, so they was telling me, they said, look, they said, y'all just well pick up a uh, 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 rain cloud. Said he jumped about 10 foot every fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm not judging. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be between, you know, the handler and the judges on what to do here. You know, Mike Matney was, was handling. And uh, it didn't surprise me because Joe Don never had a dog broken his life to like when breaking them. <laughs> but uh, if he's here, I tell him the sun. <laughs> but old Rain Cloud, he would, when I shot, uh, back then shot a shotgun. When I shot, I don't know, he, he had to jump because he wanted to go pick that bird up. Joe Don killed him a thousand birds. And, uh, but he is so stout, they just used him anyway. You know, just, I mean, powerful dog. But, you know, the bad side, he wasn't a good sire. Just didn't turn out that mean. You just don't ever know. Nope, never know. Never well, know. one thing we know is this has been a great visit, Gary. I've had you for an hour and 18 minutes. That's a long time. I'm going to I'm gonna have to let you go because I, 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 we're going to do this again. We could, we could talk for an hour, I think, just on Farrell Miller stories, and I don't oh, want to yeah. get started there. <laughs> 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 so I really do appreciate you coming on. This has been, this has been awesome. And I, but I don't want to over, over, overstay my welcome with you. And, well, uh, we're going to want to do it again. Sports, you know? Yeah. Hey, that's what we're here to do. And, right. and, uh, we want to get the guys like you out there that are, you know, they're in the trenches and doing it. And, and, you know, the, the ones we're reading about, you know, in the field and, and, uh, hopefully seeing down the road. So 
I once again appreciate you coming on. Everybody that's been watching, we've had quite a few people watching all night long, and and there's going to be a lot more as this gets shared and and watched later on. So uh, make sure you do uh, share this story or share this video with uh, with your friends and and get the word out. Uh, and if, like I said, I've said before, if people like these, we're going to do more of them. Uh, just let me know. All and, right. Uh, thanks a I lot, Gary. Thank we really, yeah, I really appreciate it. Okay. So signing off for Gary Lester and Bill Holton. Have a nice night, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.